Foley, what is going on in South Africa right now? What is going on in South Africa? There's been some dramatic footage of rioting and looting ever since they put the ex-president Zuma in jail. So it started out with President Zuma going to jail, but there's deep inequality, and this is what Zuma actually represents. So you done pissed off Zuma's people? So let's get into some of these details. There's a hashtag free Zuma, free Jacob Zuma that's trending. So, so far, the looting and the inequality has killed 72 South Africans. 72 South Africans have been killed. A riot is the language of the unheard. Six days ago, ex-president Zuma was jailed for contempt of court. He didn't show up to the court that, you know, for corruption charges. And since they threw him in jail six days ago, now you have riots. The death toll after five days of violent riots and looting have hit 72 on Wednesday. Some of the most violent unrest have been in Alexandria, uh, Alexandria Township, a suburb of Johannesburg. Johannesburg, Deborah Pata. Deborah Pata said hordes of looters have spent days ransacking retail stores, grabbing anything that they can. There was one heart-stopping moment where a toddler was rescued from a building set ablaze by rioters. I saw the picture. I didn't see the video, but they dropped the baby like maybe one or two stories up or something. So that was very scary. It's very so Zuma supporters are mostly young, often economically disadvantaged people who are receptive to his message demanding dignity for the rural and the poor and the uneducated. These were people like him, he argued. This message has found an audience because the majority of South Africans who were impoverished under the apartheid system have not broken free of the pop of poverty under the dem under democratic rule. Even while South Af South Africa's middle and upper classes have become uh, become somewhat more racially diverse. Let's hear a clip of this DW talking about it. Uh, on making uh, a destructive mark on this country, doing significant damages uh, to, to certain assets in this country, and we've certainly seen uh, how it is affecting uh, the delivery of products, key nerve centers uh, that are responsible for the transportation of goods across the country have actually been halted, including certain sites where vaccine rollout has been suspended. So that's a little bit of the media talking about it. So Zuma's populist message combined with his trademark charisma and flair, especially in his native Zulu language, endear him to his supporters. So this President Zuma, he was president, you know, right after, I guess, uh, what? I don't want to say that. But um, he, his, he represents the poor. He represents the uneducated, the rural. And so a lot of the lumpen proletariat, right, and then combined with him being able to speak Zulu, and then he stands in contrast to his rival, Ramaphosa, who's a wealthy technocrat businessman from Soweto. Or Soweto. Uh, now, this is some of the worst violence that South Africa has seen since the end of apartheid in the 1990s. There have been days of protest, loading, uh, looting, and rioting across the country, although it was sparked by the jailing of former President Jacob Zuma. It's turned into something else because it's exposing the deeper issues of poverty and inequality. Angry crowds have looted shops, burned down businesses, and disrupted supply chains. Some areas could run out of food as a result. So how will the government tackle the crisis? Firefighters are cleaning up the mess, helped by local residents, wielding brooms, rioters. Rioters looted and destroyed shops, leading to severe shortages of basics. Some petrol stations have limited the amount motorists can buy as fuel transportation has been disputed. Local media are also reporting cues that food lines in Johannesburg, meanwhile, Northern Cape and Mapu Malenga have become the latest provinces to be hit by violence. The BBC's uh, Noma Masiki in Durban says the city, city's business owners are slowly returning to their shops to evaluate the damage. There's empty shoe boxes, broken dishes, rotting food and debris litter virtually every street. In the city center, Zuma, 79 years old, he was convicted of contempt of court last month after failing to attend an inquiry. Let's listen to some more of the news. In the legal presentation, you would argue that that has absolutely no bearing uh, on the on the Mr. Zuma's appeal case at the Constitutional Court. Uh, 
on Monday, um, his lawyers spent uh, the better part of the day essentially making their case as to why that court uh, should reconsider its sentencing, its, its judgment and conviction of the former president. So, uh, Zuma, he's 79 years old, he's convicted of contempt of court last month after failing to attend an inquiry into corruption during his presidency. He handed himself in to police last Wednesday to start serving his 15-month prison sentence, but this sparked violent protest, arson attacks, and opportunistic looting in his home province of KwaZulu-Natal. KwaZulu-Natal. 72 people have died, 10 who were killed in a stampede during looting at a shopping center in Soweto. The deployment, I wonder what Trevor Noah has to say about this. The deployment of soldiers to support the police did not seem to deter looters. The BBC filmed a baby being thrown from the first floor of a building in Durban that was on fire after ground floor shops were looted. Twelve people suspected of provoking the riots and over 1,200 people have been arrested, including the daughter of President Zuma. Free Jacob Zuma, hashtag Free Jacob Zuma is trending in Durban. Protesters threatened to shut down the KwaZulu Natal province unless authorities released Zuma, South Africa's first Zulu president. Okay, so Zuma was president of South Africa from 2009 to 2018. So for nine years, he's the first Zulu president. When his African National Congress ANC party forced him to step down, Zuma then received a 15-month prison sentence for contempt of court after he refused to appear before a state commission of inquiry into corruption under his administration. When brothers fight to the death, foreigners inherit their father's property. Separately, Zuma faces 16 other charges, including racketeering, fraud, and money laundering. Related to a 30 billion rand, five billion dollar arms deal he negotiated as vice president in 1999. Government prosecutors first brought these charges in 2008, but dropped them when Zuma ran for president in 2009. Zuma maintains his innocence, pleading not guilty and calling the inquiry a, a witch hunt. This isn't Zuma's first brush with controversy, a criminal trial, other corruption charges, a court finding that he violated the Constitution, and a charge of hate speech all predate his current legal troubles. None of these episodes ever resulted in a guilty verdict. So what explains the continued support for Zuma? It's largely the same things that made him popular as a leader, his stated preference for enlarging in large-scale economic redistribution, albeit in, at times through corrupt means to address persistent racialized poverty in South Africa. Everybody who was watching that case from the legal expert side does not feel that uh, Mr. Zuma's lawyers made a convincing enough case uh, that the hurdles that they needed to get over to, to get the court to, to make that decision, they don't appear to have done that. So Zuma poured millions into upgrading the family's houses, adding a swimming pool, a helipad, and underground bunkers. He also enhanced the surrounding community, bringing in electricity and roads and piped water after he became president in 2009. Zuma is often credited with winning the KwaZulu-Natal province, home to the majority of the country's Zulu population, for the ANC. The ANC is the one that broke apartheid. That's Nelson Mandela's party. The nationally dominant ANC never held a majority there until Zuma. So Zuma is both Mandela and Zula. Zulu. He's both Mandela and Zulu, which is why he's so freaking popular. You're going to throw this popular fucking ex-president? Look what you did, you stupid judge. Look what you did, you little jerk. That goddamn judge for contempt of court or whatever. I mean, I can, I can, it's just crazy how the judicial branch is, you know, they're, they're not pissed off about poverty. They're not pissed off about homelessness. They're not pissed off about, you know, the shit that people have to go through. South Africa has basically been going through America, but they're a lot poorer, so they got the COVID thing. Everything's been shut down. Unemployment skyrocketing, and businesses have been shut down, so people aren't making money. There's the, the hustle and bustle, and so what are the people supposed to do? What are the people supposed to do? Meanwhile, you got the judicial branch in South Africa, and what do they do? Well, hell, they're going to have a strong, you know, when it comes to fucking over a former president. Well, they'll fuck over a former president all goddamn day long, right? That they'll do. But care about the poor? Make sure that the people of South Africa have all that they need? No, they want to play fucking politics. They want to play goddamn politics. Contempt of court? Maybe that court should have contempt. I mean, look, the, I mean, the whole country has contempt for that motherfucking court. It wasn't just, you know, President Zuma, leave that motherfucker alone and worry about how you're going to, you know, 
feed your hunger and get uh, some money and some better economics into South Africa for the poor. But it doesn't appear that the developers in the country today will have any bearing upon that particular case, Brent. There are soldiers on some streets tonight in South Africa. Yes. The military, was the military deployed to do a job that the local police could not do or would not do? That is essentially it, and that has caused outrage. Uh, this deployment uh, of the military, although it is consigned to these two uh, provinces, has really shown uh, what is a, a failure by law enforcement. Uh, People were warned in this country. It was clear to people that there would be some kind of a reaction uh, if the former president was incarcerated. So that was to be expected. The fact that for days on end you had people causing the damage that people have done, the extent of the looting, destruction, and there was no law enforcement visible in, in some cases for hours on end and not a single police officer in sight. And now you have a military presence which itself is proving ineffective. It is a limited deployment and it has done nothing uh, to quell the outbreaking and the unrest in this country. We are still seeing more looting taking place even as I am speaking at a number of locations in the two affected provinces, Haldane and KwaZulu-Natal. So certainly 